Hey guys, I'm Ajin this. In this episode of Vlogmas Day 2 with Amejin, I'm going to be talking about Hanko in Japanese culture. The Japanese uh, love name stamps, which is what hanko are. So if you come to Japan for a lengthy period of time, like I am, I'm studying here for a year, you will need a hanko. This is a name stamp and usually it's written in Japanese. I'm pretty sure it has to be actually. You can go to like, there's special, special stores and shops that create hanko for you. You can order them online and custom design them and stuff like that. For me, um, my tutor, Chuta, uh, basically someone who helps me get adjusted to Japanese life and the Japanese university that I'm at, my tutor helped me make my own hanko, which we could apparently do at the, um, which we could do at like the university store. It's, it's not really a store. It's like a, a mart, a mart, a food mart, but they also they also sell like school supplies and apples products surprisingly <laughs> and they deliver stuff and apparently make hunkle too I wanted to make my hunkle with the there are so many different ways you can make hunkle and usually foreigners gaijin just use romaji the romaji um, pronunciation of their foreign name so mine would be hanikatto hanikatto and I don't really like that, so <laughs> I wanted, I've heard of people who use ano, kanji for their last name, but the kanji meaning matched the meaning of their last name. For example, if you have someone whose last name is uh, Blackwood, so the Blackwood family, right? If they come over and they wanted to make hanko, they would use the character for black and wood. The pronunciation would be black burakudo, not like kuroki or kuroki or whatever. So for mine, for my hanko, I my last name of course is Honeycut. That's made up of honey and cut. Fun fact: the cut in my last name does not actually mean cutting, like with scissors. It's actually a name, a uh, spelling change from the original. Uh, spelling of my name. My last name was originally spelled Hanikot, Kot, and that Kot comes from cottage, so it actually means cottage, um, like a honey cottage. And my ancestors were apparently honey farmers in England. They came over to America, and through spelling standardizations, a bunch of names got changed, and including mine, became Honeycut. But at the time when I was making my hanko, I really didn't know all this, so I assumed it the cut in my name meant cut, and uh, I got my hanko to say the character for honey, which is hachimitsu no mitsu, mitsu, and the character for cut, kiru, kiru no ki, right? I'm gonna try to show you my hanko up close. So this is my hanko. It might look backwards to you, but when I put it in ink and press it on a piece of paper, it looks, it's, it's correct. <laughs> You can see the character for honey above and the character for cut below. And I bought a case with red ink, so whenever I put it in that ink and stamp it down, it looks red. I'll probably put the equivalent on the screen for you to see. But yeah, so hanko are used when you want to like sign a document or for like official papers or maybe at the bank if you're buying a house if you're buying i guess a car or a vehicle that needs your signature important stuff like that is when you would use hanko instead of your signature you can sign for things i guess and actually i didn't have a hanko when i went to fill out a bunch of forms at the city office they actually made me put my fingerprint in ink and then like put my fingerprint in the spot where you would have hanko so Sometimes they'll make you do your fingerprint instead of hunkle. 
So yeah, that's all I know about Hanko. If you have any other suggestions or you want me to show you other aspects of Japanese life, just let me know. Comment below or send me a tweet. And if you like these videos, give it a nice thumbs up. Maybe subscribe and share while you're at it too. <laughs> Again, this is a vlogmas episode, and I'll be posting more throughout the month. Check back daily, please. Arigatou gozaimasu. Peace, guys.